The broadcast of the Transportation Public Works Committee will now begin. Welcome. Um, this is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Transportation Public Works Committee today, June 9th, 2021. I'm Council Member Kevin Reich and I am the chair of the committee. I will begin uh, to note for the record that this meeting has a remote participation by members of the city staff as authorized by Minnesota statute section 13D.021 due to the declared local public health emergency. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city's website, YouTube channel, as a means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to Minnesota open meeting law. Uh, I will call upon the clerk to confirm a quorum by calling the roll. Councilmember Gordon. Fletcher. Here. Johnson. Here. Palmasano. Present. Bender. Councilmember Gordon. Councilmember Bender. Here. Chair Reich. Present. Five members present. We now have a quorum. That has been confirmed. Uh, we have 20 items today on our agenda. I'll go through the consent item, which are items 6 through 17, total 12, uh, and we'll record them for the record. Of course, they can be full, pulled for any discussion as any committee uh, requests, any more requests. Item 6 is authorizing a joint powers agreement with the City of Brooklyn Center for the maintenance of the 53rd Avenue North and Xerxes Avenue North. Seven is authorizing subordinate funding agreement number six with the Metropolitan Council for the Metro Green Line extension, uh, known as Southwest LRT, the rail line. Eight is authorizing a contract amendment with Concrete Idea Incorporated for upgrades to the ADA pedestrian ramps. Nine is authorizing a contract amendment with Lunda Construction Incorporated for the 10th Avenue Southeast River Bridge Rehabilitation Project. Ten is authorizing a contract amendment with Kinley Horn and Associates incorporated for engineering and design services for the Grand Avenue South Street Reconstruction Project. 11 is the 2021 Capital Improvement Program, passage of resolution adjusting appropriation and revenue in the city's capital budget. 12 is authorizing a request for proposals for the First Avenue South uh, Street Reconstruction Bridge over the Greenway Project. 13 is approving the uh, Paracycling Large Block Event Permit to be held June 17th through the 19th of this year. 14 is the bid for the Whittier Lindale Protected Bikeway Project. 15 is the bid for liquid chlorine. Uh, that was the sole bid, but we definitely looked at the pricing to keep it consistent. 16 is the bid for the Fridley Campus Electrical Rehabilitation Construction Project. 17 is the bid for the 2021 Concrete Paving Rehabilitation. Um, that project area is listed. 18 is the receiving and filing of all 2020 quarterly reports for the traffic zones, restrictions, and controls. And 18 is receiving and filing the first quarter 2021 quarter report for the traffic zones, restrictions, and controls. Um, is there any discussion on these items or any item wish to be pulled? If not, I move all items and have the clerk call the roll. <coughs> Councilmember Gordon. Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Paul Masano. Aye. Bender. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Chair Reich. Aye. There are five ayes. Those items proceed to full council. Uh, we'll now go to public hearing number one, and I will yield the floor to our director. Thank you, Chair Reich, and good afternoon, committee members. Uh, Brett Jelly, Interim Director of Public Works. Uh, first item will be introduced. Uh, the 53rd Avenue North Street Research Team Project uh, will be introduced by Mike Kennedy, Director of Transportation, Maintenance and Repair. Good afternoon, Chair Reich and committee members. Again, I'm Mike Kennedy. I'm the Director of our Transportation Maintenance and Repair Group 4, Division 4 Public Works. Today we have a series of public hearings for three linear projects, the first of which is the 53rd Avenue North Street Resurfacing Project. 
<clears throat> on December 18th, 2020, the City Council designated the locations, streets, and improvements proposed to be made in the 2021 Street Resurfacing Program. Uh, 53rd Avenue North from mm -hmm. 10 Avenue North to I-94 East Frontage Road is a residential uh, municipal state aid or MSA street that was built in 1980. <clears throat> it has a pavement condition index, average pave pavement condition index or PCI of 73. And this is a border street between Minneapolis and the city of Brooklyn Center. The joint powers agreement between the two cities is currently being prepared to define roles, responsibilities, and respect, respective project cost allocations. The completed joint powers agreement will be submitted for approval at a future committee meeting. This project is planned to be completed over two years, so the assessments will be levied in 2023. The purpose of the asphalt paving, uh, asphalt pavement resurfacing program is to extend life of some city streets, which are not scheduled for any other preventative maintenance, renovation, or reconstruction in the foreseeable future. The resulting, the resurfacing program is addressing city streets, which include some MSA streets, and are at the point of their life where a new street surface will extend the street's life, improve ride quality and neighborhood livability, and help to slow the overall deterioration of our city street system. That goes for Brooklyn centers. Um, segment of the street as well. The 2021 uh, program is identified in the 20 year streets funding plan and was included in the 2021-2025 capital improvement program. Transportation maintenance and repair coordinates with transportation planning and programming on any bike facilities or anything like that within this program. The proposed street resurfacing special assessments were determined by applying the 2021 uniform assessment rates to the land area of benefited parcels located within the street influence zone along the improved streets. These assessments are not calculated based on project cost alone. The city uses a formula that combines influence area with an annually established uniform assessment rate. This formula is carefully considered and applied by city staff and is intended to account for and reflect each project's value to, be, to the benefited properties. The 2021 resurfacing rates are 66 cents per square foot for non-residential properties and 22 cents per square foot for residential. The proposed total assessment amount for the 53rd Avenue project is $62,975.53. There was a community meeting held on excuse me, Wednesday, May 26th. There were 97 individual invitations mailed out and there were no attendees at the meeting. This was a virtual meeting. So uh, what we propose today is passage of resolution, ordering the work to proceed and adopting special assessments in the amount of $62,975.53 for this project and passage of resolution requesting the Board of Estimate and Taxation authorize the city's issuance and sale of assessment bonds in said amount. That concludes my presentation. We're here to, uh, we can take questions if needed. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Kennedy. Any questions per the staff presentation? I'm not seeing any. I will then open the public hearing. Uh, do we have anyone registered or any indication otherwise to make comment? Not seeing any. Um, is there anyone on the line? Public hearing queue. Oh, we do have someone. Uh, Matt. Uh, Neinstedt, uh, please state your name and address for the record. Yes, uh, my name is Matt Neinstedt. Uh, my address is 5230 Humboldt Avenue North. Um, I support the resurfacing, um, but I do not support the current scope of the bike lane uh, proposed for 53rd Avenue North as part of the project. Um, this lack of support is primarily due to safety concerns and the lack of maintenance on the current bikeways, um, let alone how maintenance has been performed on 53rd Avenue North currently. The speed limit on 53rd Avenue North is 30 miles an hour. There is no traffic enforcement in the city and people routinely speed down 53rd Avenue North, adding fresh pavement without any traffic calming measures on a very long, fairly wide street is only going to make it worse. The city has described this as part of the all ages and abilities network and nothing about the proposed bikeway conforms to the design guidelines of the all ages and ability criteria. So that's based on the criteria for speed and traffic volume. Uh, the bikeway 
based on the current criteria would have to be protected to conform to those guidelines. And I urge the city to stop misleading uh, the people through the project website that these bikeways somehow are part of the network because they're not. Uh, the city has many poorly maintained bikeways and by poorly maintained, I mean, there's a lack of restriping, resurfacing and routine street sweeping. I would only support the bikeway on 53rd Avenue North if it actually conformed to the guidelines of the All Ages and Abilities Network and the city has allocated funds to maintain it in the future. Thank you for those comments. Um, I will see if there are other people who wish to make testimony, uh, but we will address uh, the issues as you present to them. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, we have, I believe, also. Oh, I'm not seeing. Is there anyone else uh, in queue? Not seeing any indication of that. Uh, I will make a call out for anyone listening to Fresh Star Six. Not hearing any indication through that method. Um, I will close the public hearing and um, ask staff to address the issues of maintenance and uh, dis uh, facility design, particularly around bicycle facility. Just sure. hello. Sure, uh, uh, right. I can, this is Mike Kennedy again. I can talk about the maintenance. Um, we actually have a very robust maintenance program. I'm not sure of the specifics of the concerns about maintenance. We um, have a, a very solid uh, winter maintenance program. We have a summer sweeping program and uh, we, we believe we are taking care of them uh, appropriately. Um, the um, repair and replacement, we would do th those programs as well. Uh, resurfacing and some of the other um, more uh, aggressive repairs would be something that we've done out of the capital improvement program. The um, striping and the bike lanes, um, I, I'm not prepared to respond to those. Um, I don't know if there's someone here from our planning and programming group to do that. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I am um we are doing some emailing behind the scenes to follow up on the triple a uh specifically the triple a question and i'm just i don't have it quite at the moment well while, while that's uh, uh being gathered um i imagine in terms of traffic enforcement uh there was some issues around speeding uh, sometimes design is the cure for that uh and sometimes it's enforcement um, do we have any sort of special enforcement of order? Uh, Mr. Chair, I there wouldn't be any special, I guess, enforcement on necessarily on a, a border street like this that I at least from um, you know city forces. Uh, I can't speak to what the neighboring jurisdictions will would do on that road, and that's um, something we can certainly follow up on. Yeah, and it's one of the things I think our enforcement division, uh, if they know that there's a specific issue on a, a road that's about to be repaired, has been repaired, uh, or needs repair, uh, that would be a, a sort of something that needs to be brought to their attention, I imagine. Um, any indication on the striping question? If not, we can close the public hearing and just get back to the person offline. Yeah, Mr. Chair, at this point, I, I would say um, we can follow up. Uh, we'll follow up with the committee and uh, with the, the public speaker with uh, an answer around that the striping question. Appreciate that, thank you. So I will close the public hearing and see if there are any questions uh, or comments from committee. Not seeing that, I'll move the item. Any further discussion? If not, the clerk to please call the roll to confirm approval. Councilmember Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Paul Masano. Aye. Bender. Aye. 
Chair Rake. All right. There are five ayes. That carries, and we can now move to public hearing number two, um, giving the floor back to Director Bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, second public hearing is 54th Street West Street resurfacing project, and uh, Mr. Kennedy, the Director of Transportation Maintenance and Repair, will introduce this item. Thank you, Director Jelly, uh, Committee Chair, and members of the committee. Um, this is the second uh, project, similar to the first, except we have to go all the way to the south coast of the city for this one. This is a Border Street, 54th Street West, uh, Border Street with Edina. On December 18th, 2020, the City Council designated the location, streets, and improvements for the 2021 program. 54th Street from France Avenue South to Zenith Avenue South is a residential street that was, it was constructed in 1969. It has a pavement condition index average of 47, and it's a border street between Minneapolis and the city of Edina. A joint powers agreement, again, between the two cities is currently being, is, has been prepared to define the roles, responsibilities, and respective project cost allocations. The completed joint powers agreement was submitted to um, the TMPW committee on May 19th. That's a typo in your letter. Um, the purpose of the program, again, is to extend the life of some city streets. The proposed streets resurface special assessments were determined by applying the 2021 uniform assessment rates as stated earlier. Uh, there was, again, a uh, neighborhood meeting convened on too many pieces of paper here. On Tuesday, May 25th, uh, there were 32 invitations mailed for a virtual meeting and one attendee, attendee logged into the meeting. There were really no issues uh, brought up at the meeting. Therefore, our recommendation today is passage of resolution ordering the work to proceed in adopting special assessments in the amounts of $24,361.31 for this project. Passage of resolution requesting the Board of Estimate and Taxation authorize the city's issuance and sale of assessment bonds in the set amount. Again, that's uh, the extent of my presentation. We can stand by for questions if you. Are there any questions for staff for their presentation? Not seeing an indication of that. I will then open the public hearing and see if there are any speakers queued. No speakers queued. Um, if there's anyone online, press star six to be unmuted. Not seeing any indication to make comment through that means. I will close the public hearing, move the item, and ask if there's any committee discussion. Uh, Councilmember Palmasano. Mr. Chair, I did want to mention that um, I was present at the neighborhood level meeting um, when Larry Matsumoto came to uh, to the Fulton meeting to discuss it. There are some a really interesting use of round roundabouts or bump outs on this border street. And while it's it's kind of a unique border street in that it's very residential um, and there isn't a lot of differentiation between the north and the south sides of the street, um, I think it's working well. So I want to just offer that as these um, the roundabouts um, while they're not like multiple options of turning, they, they have been working well in this area and that, that's something that's relatively new for two different cities to embark on together. So um, we heard a lot of positive feedback from the Fulton neighborhood meeting um, and I just wanted to offer my appreciation and thanks to the public works team on this one. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that background and comment. Uh, anyone else on committee? Um, wish to speak? If not, um, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Pomasano. Aye. Bender. Aye. Chair Reich. Aye. There are five ayes. That carries. We can now go to public hearing number three. Uh, Director Jelly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, public hearing number three is Franklin Avenue West Street Resurfacing Project. Uh, once again, Mr. Kennedy, Director of Transportation Maintenance and Repair, will present the item. Thank you, Director Jelly and uh, members of the committee, and Chair Reich. Um, this one is right through the heart of, heart of the city, Franklin Avenue West Street Resurfacing. Again, on December 18th, 
2020, the City Council designated the location streets of the 2021 program, of which this project is a part of. <clears throat> Franklin Avenue West from Penn Oliver Avenue South to Hennepin South is a residential street with portions reconstructed in 1962, 1980, and 1982, and has an average condition, PCI of 56 to 77, or a range of 56 to 77. Again, the purpose of the asphalt resurfacing program is to extend life of some of these city streets. Uh, the proposed, proposed street resurfacing special assessments were uh, determined by applying the 2021 uniform assessment rates, as stated earlier. There was a community meeting held, a virtual community, community meeting held on Thursday, May 27th. Uh, at 6.30 with 131 invitations mailed and one person attended. There were no issues brought forward. So again, we recommend passage of resolution ordering the work to proceed and adopting special assessments in the amount of $127,138.70 for this project and passage of resolution authorizing the Board of Estimate Taxation to issue city and to <laughs> issue uh, and sale of assessment bonds in the amount uh, stated. But again, that's my presentation and we can stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Any questions for staff for the presentation? Uh, Councilmember Bender. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Just a quick comment that Franklin Avenue changes character pretty um, significantly in this portion um, here as it's west of Hennepin Avenue. And I just wanted to note that there is a project as well to the east on Franklin Avenue, a very short portion, which is a reconstruction with some more significant safety improvements. Um, just since there are two projects on Franklin Avenue right next to each other, I just wanted to just make sure to clarify here that, you know, this is the resurfacing project on, on that western section, that smaller um, piece which is being redesigned will come through at a different time. And um, I just, again, appreciate all the work. Franklin Avenue is one of the high crash corridors in that eastern section. So those safety improvements are really important. And, th and then this is the, um, you know, this is the portion where west of, of Hennepin, it, it gets more quiet and uh, just wanted to make that distinction between the two projects that are underway at the same time. Thanks. Thank you for noting that context. Uh, any other comments or questions for staff? Um, seeing none, I will open the public hearing. And there are no speakers signed up. I will ask uh, through audio if there's anyone who wishes to unmute and speak. Not seeing any indication there either. I will close the public hearing, move the item, and ask if there's anyone who wants to make discussion on the committee. See none, clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Fender. Aye. Chair Reich. Aye. There are five ayes. That is approved to move forward to full council. And we can now go to public hearing number four, Director Jelly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item four uh, is a land sale public hearing portion of right away adjacent to 215 Washington Avenue North and Matt Hannon uh, with our transportation engineering and design division will present this item. Thank you, Director Jelly. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Reich, members of the committee. My name is Matt Hannon with the Transportation Engineering and Design Division of Public Works. Uh, this is a public hearing and request for City Council to authorize the conveyance of city owned land to the adjacent property owner. The property is an approximately 3,800 square foot um, piece of land along the northwestern border of 215 Washington Avenue North. The adjacent property owners, MIC Limited and Jamelli Enterprises Inc. have submitted an offer to purchase the property for the review appraisal value of $210,000. The Director of Public Works has declared the property as excess and not needed for municipal operations. The city's right-of-way interest has also been vacated in preparation for the sale. As a condition of the land sale, the city will retain a storm sewer easement uh, or an easement for storm sewer purposes 
over a portion of the parcel as well. Uh, so the action before you is to pass the resolution approving the sale of the property to MIC Limited and Jamelli Enterprises Inc. for $210,000. And I'll remain available to answer any questions you may have. And uh, we've also got staff from CPED, Beth Grossen is here as uh, they will be assisting in the sale. Thanks. Thank you for the presentation. Are there any questions um, per the presentation for staff? Uh, Councilmember Fletcher. Councilmember Fletcher, do you wish Thank to? You. Uh, yeah, just uh, one quick question, which is a little bit lighthearted. I actually meant to walk by and see if it happened. Have we gotten the Jersey barriers off of that property that I know we wanted to make sure we uh, move while there's while it's still ours? Uh, you know, uh, Chair Wright, Councilmember Fletcher, um, I don't know the answer to that. I think I'd have to check in with some folks from our uh, traffic and parking services. I, I think you had maybe been corresponding uh, with them about that. Um, so I, I will have to look into that and get back to you on that. I, I, I have. I'll, I'll, I'll just note for the record that uh, my, my support for this is, is contingent on us making sure we get that done uh, in a timely way so that it's not a part of uh, negotiating with the future owner of the property. Uh, I, I think it's actually been done already, but uh, we should just double check. Um, and, and then I uh, just want to take the opportunity to compliment Public Works on their work at this uh, uh, intersection. The, the reason that this is excess is because they're doing excellent collaborative work with MnDOT uh, on reconfiguring the space around the 394 uh, off-ramp and, and uh, we've, we've managed to create both some new green space on uh, MnDOT land that the North Loop has invested heavily in uh, maintaining and, and uh, uh, adding some public art to and, and we're, we've also got a plan for reconfiguring that intersection in a way that uh, now we know that we don't need this uh, uh, particular uh, piece of land because we have a plan for how that reconfiguration can happen. So uh, I'm glad that uh, things are moving along over there so that we can make this deal and uh, I'm supportive of it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else make comment? Uh, not seeing that. Um, thanks for the uh, context, uh, Councilmember Fletcher, um, to understand the significance of this transfer and what it implies. And also, I think it's quite laudable um, your attention to our Jersey Berry inventory too. Um, make comment on that as well. And uh, anyone else? If not, um, I will um, move this item for approval. Oh wait, we have to open the public hearing. Has anyone signed up? No speakers signed up. Anyone wish to address the committee? Not hearing anyone, now I will close the public hearing, move the item and ask for any discussion. If there's no discussion, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Pomisano. Aye. Bender. Aye. Chair Reich. Aye. There are six ayes. That carries. Uh, we now can go to our final public hearing. Uh, very important uh, report, Stormwater Management Program. Uh, Director Jelly. Mr. Chair and committee members, uh, public hearing number five is Stormwater Management Program and Annual Report. And Elizabeth Stout, our Water Resources Regulatory Manager with Surface Water and Sewers will introduce this item. Thank you, Director Jelly, um, and thank you, Chair Wright and the committee members. Um, I'm Elizabeth Stout. I'm the Water Resources Manager for the Surface Water and Sewers Division here in Public Works. Today, we're convening a public hearing to receive comments on the city's Stormwater Management Program and Clean Water Act permit. All comments, both written and received in the public hearing, will be incorporated into our annual report to the State Pollution Control Agency, along with a written response to those comments. We are also requesting that this public hearing be continued to the next committee meeting on June 23rd. This is to ensure that a full 30 days notice is given for the public to participate and provide comments on this program. At the meeting on the 23rd, staff will be presenting the annual stormwater program update to the committee. 
Um, at this time, I welcome any comments or questions. Any questions per the initial staff presentation? Um, not seeing any, anyone here to speak? No one's, oh, let's see. Let's see something in my feed here. Hello, can you hear Sean? me? Yes, Sean, please uh, address the Okay, is this the uh, right time to make the comment? The committee. It certainly is. Please proceed. Okay, thank you so much. Um, um, thank you, Elizabeth Stout, and thank you, Congress Congressman members. Um, so I'm Sean Connerty. I'm uh, at 4053 23rd Avenue South, and I'm the chair and co-founder of Friends of Lake Hiawatha, and that is a, a organization representing 100 uh, dedicated community members. And uh, so um, we, uh, the issue of uh, stormwater pollution is one that we uh, know quite well. Um, so we have been um, working on addressing pollution for the past six years and have asked for stormwater treatment. Um, we've worked, uh, we've been in conversation with the city and the park board and uh, Watershed District and many other organizations uh, for six years and we have asked for stormwater treatment for Lake Hiawatha and specifically the North Pipe which uh, empties 920 acres of Minneapolis streets directly into Lake Hiawatha without filtration and um, so it's uh, created quite a problem. So as the SWMP gets revised based on input. We hope that the city of Minneapolis Public Works uh, will modify the SWMP to include trash and plastics. Um, as the, and as the, we, trash and plastics should be added to the list of targeted pollutants um, because the SWMP includes a uh, little to no acknowledgement, consideration or remedy proposed for trash and plastic pollution. Um, and even though in Minneapolis, it's the most recognizable and obvious pollutant in our waters, um, especially at Lake Hiawatha and the Mississippi River. So we ask uh, that uh, the cost of ignoring trash is evident at Lake Hiawatha where the accumulated trash of decades has now broken down into microplastics that contaminate the soil and water and are now an irreversible part of the food web. And I did submit um, a document uh, with uh, my, when I signed up. So hopefully you have that. And I, um, I would like to say a few more things, but I would welcome any questions you might have with our familiarity with that situation there. Um, so the problem's only getting worse with the consideration of plastics and uh, as they continue to break down, wildlife are eating the plastic and styrofoam and new evidence is emerging that shows the impact of microplastic accumulation in our bodies and, and, and the effect that has on human health. Um, so uh, since we made our initial pleas in 2015 um, and participated in uh, commenting on the MS4 permits and the SWMPs, we really haven't seen improvement. And that is not because of the lack of work or effort on the part of uh, public works. It's rather uh, the reality of such a large sub watershed that empties without filtration into the lake. So what is really needed is comprehensive stormwater treatment. Um, and uh, the Hiawatha Golf Course Master Plan has a plan to uh, include comprehensive stormwater treatment, but as you may know, it is a contentious issue that is continually being delayed because of it's being tied to uh, being tied to the Hiawatha Golf Course Master Plan and and the fate of Hiawatha Golf Course, um, which it being essential uh, infrastructure that is not performing well and uh, we believe you know we hope that the city could uh, 
could uh, exercise some authority as well as the other uh, governing agencies such as the DNR and the Pollution Control Agency need to um, put more uh, focus on uh, getting stormwater treatment. And we would ask that the city uh, install a temporary litter boom, uh, which we believe is quite feasible uh, at the North Pipe situation. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> one of the things in terms of the uh, cost of, uh, of ignoring it, um, the, Hiawatha, the park board says that if the master plan were to pass, which is not a certainty, um, it will require seven more years to implement comprehensive stormwater treatment. Um, and we see that as a real lack of urgency and no one is accountable for the trash that's in the lake. And in another seven years, based on the data that we've collected, um, conservatively 11,000 200 pounds of plastic and styrofoam trash or s over 700,000 pieces of trash will be added to Lake Hiawatha and downstream waters. Also, uh, uh, sir? one almost done. Okay. Okay. And uh, 4,690 pounds of phosphorus will enter Lake Hiawatha from the North Pipe. So, um, what we're asking for is that the SWMP be revised uh, to include trash and plastic as a pollutant to be addressed. Um, we ask that we install a temporary trash capture device at the North Pipe. And we also ask that the city hire staff to assist in trash cleanup at Lake Hiawatha. Thank you very much. Any questions? No questions. Uh, at this point, From uh, we're gonna do intake from the public hearing. And I will know, and thank you for that. Uh, and the submitted comments will be re reflected in the public record. Um, I also should note that we are uh, per the request of staff continuing this public uh, hearing, uh, but we will take comment today. And then of course I will be uh, subsequently moving to extend the public comment period per staff request. But in the meantime, uh, if there's anyone else who wishes to make comments, um, uh, Council Member Johnson, if you'd be willing to wait for me to close the hearing. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone else wish to make comment per the public hearing portion? Um, I will close this section knowing that I will be making a motion to extend, but in the meantime, I will call upon Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. And I appreciate uh, Sean speaking at this public hearing and all the work of Friends of Lake Hiawatha. Uh, and, you know, I have some more comments to make on that, but I thought uh, it would be a great opportunity or time to hear from staff uh, just around these concerns with trash and plastic uh, as part of this uh, stormwater management uh, program. And uh, as well, if you're able to speak to the uh, interests in uh, what Mr. Connedy mentioned around, for instance, like the um, litter boom at the site. Uh, obviously, there's more long term plans in place as well that uh, we're working with the park board on, uh, which I can speak to in my comments too, but would love to hear uh, some thoughts on this from staff. Super. Uh, is there staff able to um, respond to Councilmember Johnson's inquiry? Uh, yes, thank you, Council Member Johnson and uh, Council Member Reich. Um, to, uh, first of all, I do want to thank Mr. Connedy. He has been a tireless advocate for the water quality in Lake Hiawatha, and not just in, um, in words, but he's done a lot of cleanup events as well. Um, in regards to some of the, the work that we've done, um, we do not have trash specifically listed as a pollutant in our stormwater management program. Unlike chlorides and phosphorus and some of the more common pollutants, um, trash is not explicitly listed. Um, however, that has not stopped staff from, from working on both some pilot projects as well as studies looking at, at the impacts that trash is having on Lake Hiawatha. We've been fortunate enough, we were able to partner with the University of Minnesota to look at some possible options within the, the Lake Hiawatha watershed for some structural practices. 
um, one of the recommendations that came out of that study was some retrofitting some manholes within the watershed with some trash screens. So staff was able to manufacture some of those, put them in different locations, um, move those around and look for some of the most effective places to put, you know, some upstream trash controls. Uh, we also were able to benefit from having an urban scholar for two years that was dedicated to looking at the trash problem and studying the trash problem within Lake Hiawatha. They did transects of the lake with quantifying the types and amounts of trash. Um, in 2020, we were able to do, or excuse me, um, Yes, in 2020, we were able to, able to start a microplastics screening to look at the, the types of microplastics and the prevalence within those. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, we had to um, really truncate that study, so it was pretty um, uh, slimmed down from what we were hoping to do, but we've also been able to do some what we call litter scans within the Hiawatha watershed looking at areas where there is a heavier amount of litter and that might help us in the future um, learn how to target our education campaigns. Are we seeing higher amounts of litter next to certain businesses? Are we seeing more litter on bus routes that would then um, encourage us to, you know, educate people or put out more trash cans at, um, at, at bus stations? Um, we have done a couple of different pilot projects, um, the first of which is we did install a, a floating trash curtain at that north um, pipe um, going into Lake Hiawatha. Unfortunately, um, this pipe is very significant. It drains almost a thousand acres and we were never able to successfully um, get it to stay during large storm events. Um, we think that to do an end of the pipe practice, it would require that we um, have really a, a full rework of that end of the pipe. There isn't an easy place or an easy way to do an end of the pipe best management practice. Um, the Lake Hiawatha watershed was also um, with the Hamlin University, the city of Minneapolis, um, and the Standish Erickson Neighborhood Association was our initial adopt a drain neighborhoods. So they, um, we were able to partner with that neighborhood in the Lake Hiawatha watershed to start the adopt a drain program to um, encourage people to clean up their, their storm drains and their gutters and to keep trash from, from even entering the storm sewer system. That involved um, actually door hangering every single household within that watershed, as well as we had master water stewards go out and try and speak to about a thousand residents there as well. To um, so That really kickstarted that program back in 2016. And um, we actually have one of the highest densities of adopted storm drains in the city within the Hiawatha watershed and within the Standish Erickson neighborhoods. Um, you know, these are some of the things that, that staff has been working on. We are um, putting together a, a report that's going to the PCA that outlines really all of the work, the studies, as well as the pilot projects that we've implemented so far. And hopefully um, it'll also look at next steps. This is a, a complicated issue and there's no one best solution. Mr. Chair, I appreciate all the uh, comments on this. Ms. Stout, this is, this is helpful. Uh, specifically to the idea of adding some sort of standard into a policy of what uh, limits would be. What are your thoughts on that? And, and obviously, I think one challenge is compared to actual chemicals, right? The chemicals, you can measure parts per million and all of that. But have are you aware of other cities or states that do you have uh, such standards around trash, around microplastics or litter uh, in their policies? Uh, is there a way that we could import or adopt uh, what's being done elsewhere in that regard uh, or that we might consider uh, how such a, a standard could be implemented here? Uh, thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Um, the state of Minnesota does not recognize trash and litter as a, a specific pollutant. Um, it's not something that we have water quality standards on. 
I believe the only state that does currently have a trash standard is California. And the way theirs is written is that there's a zero. I mean, you can have no, you're supposed to have no trash because there's no natural amount that would be in the environment. Um, I, I guess I can't speak to the ease at which we would add a, a specific standard into our, our stormwater management program. Um, we do try and address stat, um, trash through both studies and, and other projects. However, um, I guess I haven't, I haven't thought about adding it independent of a state standard into our stormwater management program. Thank you, I appreciate that. And that's really helpful. And I'd love uh, for us to think about how we could do that. You know, we have uh, other standards and even aspirational goals, right? Like vision zero. And uh, to me, we should have a goal that there's zero trash flowing uh, into any of our lakes or streams and certainly uh, from city infrastructure, such as our, our stormwater uh, pipes and system. Uh, obviously, Lake Hiawatha is a more complicated history around what's going on right now and the, the relationship uh, with the park board. You know, for my colleagues, this is located in Ward 12 and uh, ever since 2013 when the golf course at Lake Hiawatha was uh, damaged during flooding and uh, the park board discovered that there was uh, groundwater being pumped and a magnitude of excess beyond the DNR permit. Uh, there was a process put in place to really figure out uh, what the future of, of this park looks like and what the land use uh, is and how that can be uh, uh, compatible with uh, good practice uh, ecologically and for our environment and uh, still maintaining recreational use on the site. Uh, and the city of Minneapolis as we interface with this is really around stormwater infrastructure and our pipes flowing into uh, Lake Hiawatha and I know that as a city we've been eager to upgrade our infrastructure and fix it uh, so that it can be uh, more responsible in terms of how it is uh, displacing stormwater into the lake and uh, so we can have natural catchments and biofiltration and all of that uh, as a part of this. And I know that there's been a multi-year process from the Park and Recreation Board uh, around a master plan. Uh, it was derailed uh, at the Park Board due to a technicality around renaming is my understanding. Uh, I believe it's going to be back up soon before the Park Board. Uh, I certainly hope that they don't start over. Uh, I, I think that, you know, it's always hard when you have uh, different uh, interests on, in a particular site. And I know some people want to keep it 18 holes of golf. Some people want zero golf at the site. They uh, come up with a compromise of, of nine holes at the site. And certainly our interest as a city is around this infrastructure component of it and uh, fixing the infrastructure so that it's, uh, it's displacing that water responsibly, as well as making sure that the homeowners around there uh, continue to have uh, as much protection as possible when it comes to preventing of flooding. And so those are components that are within the city's purview. And uh, we think those are pieces that are addressed through their master plan. And so uh, continuing to work with them, I know we have uh, conversations, I believe even a conversation uh, later today with the park board around uh, these kind of pieces. But uh, it's, it's important stuff because we shouldn't be uh, treating this as a giant dragnet for our city streets where, you know, if um, if a person was to uh, litter onto the street and throw a bottle cap down, unless it's either going to be picked up by somebody, it's going to be swept up during spring or fall sweeping, or it's going to end up in Lake Hiawatha. And that's true for uh, more than 12 miles of city streets. And so it's a, it's a really important issue, and I'd love to see us uh, develop some standards here around this. I understand it's, uh, um, it's not something that's necessarily widely in practice, but both from an aspirational standpoint and a practical standpoint, it would be great if we could um, work in, in that direction. So I'd love to work with Emma Stout on that uh, and figure out uh, if that's something we could implement here. And then just got to give a huge thanks to the friends of Lake Hiawatha and Sean Connedy for all their work over the years. You know, I mean, they've literally picked up tons, tons of trash. I've seen the videos of trash is openly flowing into Lake Hiawatha and it's it's a huge 
concern uh, for the health of the lake, for the health of uh, the wildlife in the area, for the usability of the lake, for residents. Uh, and we know it doesn't just end at Lake Hiawatha. It flows into Minnehaha Creek. It flows into the Mississippi. It flows down into the Gulf of Mexico. And so it's all interconnected, our system. Uh, and, you know, one of the things we value here so much in the land of 10,000 lakes is our, our water system. And so, you know, Friends of Lake Hiawatha and Sean have been uh, drawing attention in the spotlight uh, to this environmental uh, injustice that's happening. And, you know, I think that we need to uh, get this finally fixed at Lake Hiawatha and across the city where we have infrastructure interfacing with our waterways. And so I appreciate uh, the conversation here at committee and I think we need to just continue forward on, on this path and figure out ways that we can um, do even more as a city. Thank you, council member. Um, any further discussion? If not, I will uh, move to continue this item to the June 23rd meeting uh, of the TPW committee uh, and ask the clerk to call the roll to approve this continuance. Council member Gordon. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Bender. Aye. Chair Rake. Aye. There are six ayes. And that item will continue to the uh, stated future meeting. We can now go to discussion item number 20, uh, our utility credit program. Uh, Director Jelly. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Liz, uh, Elizabeth Stout, Water Resources Regulatory Manager, will present this item. I just want to note um, this is something that uh, is a I think a very successful example of a of an environmental program the city uh, started in my in kind of during my time uh, here and uh, it was time for some update and I just want to recognize uh, tremendous work and thought by Stephanie Johnson and by Ms. Stout uh, as they updated this program. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you, um, and well, thank you again for um, having me today at the, the, the committee hearing. Um, again, I'm Liz Stout. I'm the city's water resources manager, and today I'm here to present suggested updates to the city's stormwater utility credit program. Um, and I did have some slides. Hoping we can. All right, if we can go to the next one. The stormwater utility was originally implemented in 2004. It was implemented to fund necessary construction, maintenance, and repair of the city's storm sewer system. The utility amount charged to a property owner is based on the size of the property and on the square footage, the amount of impervious surface on the property. At the time the utility was introduced, there was a desire to provide a mechanism to incentivize property owners to implement stormwater practices that would improve water quality. Um, this led to the creation of the Stormwater Utility Credit Program. The existing credit program allows for credits off of a utility bill for both improving water quality and for reducing the quantity of runoff from a property. Next slide, please. Um, when beginning to look at updates to the utility credit program, staff developed some principles to guide our program changes. These are, first of all, that everyone benefits from the storm sewer system and from clean lakes, creeks, and the river. So everyone should pay something into the utility. We wanted to identify the most significant pollutants into our water bodies and reward behavior that reduces those pollutants. We wanted to incentivize above and beyond efforts or going beyond just statutory or regulatory minimums. And we wanted to find a way to incorporate equity into the program. 
city staff completed a benchmarking study looking at utility credit programs around the country to identify and understand what best practices were, um, their policies and implementation. That benchmarking exercise led to some of the program recommendations that you're gonna see before you today. While developing these recommendations, uh, next slide please, city staff had input from a variety of community partners. Um, city staff established a community advisory partners group that helped make recommendations on the program. These partners included current credit holders, such as management companies, uh, Minneapolis schools, and the University of Minnesota, as well as a local nonprofit that helps um, residential homeowners create stormwater practices and then apply for utility credits, um, as well as representatives from local watershed management organizations. City staff also met independently with the Southside and Northside Green Zone Councils to discuss and receive comments on the possible program updates. These councils were most interested in promoting urban greening and sustainable landscaping in environmental injustice areas and simplifying the program so that the application is not a burden on residential homeowners. Uh, these recommendations led to some of the program changes you see before you. City staff also presented this proposed program change to the Community Env Environmental Advisory Commission or SEAC. SEAC members recommended that efforts that provide additional water quality benefits beyond those regulatory minimums should be rewarded, and they supported the idea of requiring all commercial applicants to develop and implement a chloride management plan. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the, the chart here, you can find a copy of in your uh, materials, but the most significant changes to the program are we are significantly simplifying the credit program for single family residential homeowners. Rather than having nearly the same application requirements as larger developments, commercial industrial sites, we are gonna simplify the application process to a single page um, with just photo documentation. And then there'll just be a set credit amount for those properties. Then all single family residential credits that have been approved before January 1st, 2022, um, will continue to be allowed to retain their current credit amount and standard as long as they're current in their, their utility. So they're up to date on their utility bills. Um, however, if they receive more credit under the new program, they could then fill out the one page application and apply and get additional credit amounts. For the commercial credit holders, um, we've decided to have the maximum credit amount be set to 70%. Um, there is a chloride management plan required for all credit applications. Um, the city is providing credit for applicants going above and beyond by providing additional water quality treatment, volume control, or rate control um, above the minimum standards that have been established in the Stormwater Management Ordinance, Chapter 54. And we've been able to incorporate equity into the program by allowing for an additional credit of 10% for implementing green infrastructure within the north side and south side green zones. Green infrastructure is important within these areas because additional greening leads to um, helping with urban heat island effect. It provides additional park-like spaces and it provides additional um, just air quality benefits of having greening. Um, all commercial stormwater utility credit holders that are, um, that are approved before the implementation date of these program changes will be allowed to retain their current credit amounts and the previous standard as long as they are staying in good standing with their utility. Um, we're also recommending that there be a five-year recertification period for all of the commercial credit holders. Um, this means that every five years, um, that the credit holder needs to reapply and prove that their best management practice continues to function. This is really to ensure that, that ongoing operation and maintenance is being performed, as well as making sure that the stormwater management practice that's put into place to get the credit is continuing to function. 
Uh, thank you for your time this afternoon, and I welcome any comments, questions, or feedback on these program updates that we're looking to bring forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments for the staff presentation and discussion item 20? Not seeing any, I will uh, comment by first thanking you for all this work. Um, I, I will note that there are several people. I think uh, Director Jelly commented how um, earlier in his uh, Minneapolis career was working on sort of the baseline policies that we're working from. I will note that our colleague uh, Councilor Goodman was also a policymaker during that time and took great interest and even though not on the, this committee, um, shared her, you know, sort of um, interest and uh, insights actually from where the baseline pro uh, policy came from and was eager to participate uh, as we move forward with this. And of course, we move forward uh, not just to do a revamp of a program to make it function better, but to make it comport and advance broader city goals um, as a mechanism to achieve goals that sometimes might not be thought of in this area, particularly around environment. Big topic, lots of components, sometimes seem overwhelming uh, in its scope, but here we have a concrete way in where we're adjusting to meet some of those objectives vis-a-vis -vis our uh, stormwater management system, which is an important and vast system of which if you do it right, the impacts can be quite positive and noticeable. And I think this puts us in that direction. So pretty exciting stuff from my perspective. And um, and thank you for all, all this background work. Um, this is a discussion item. Anyone else wish to make comment before I move approval of the update? Uh, see none, I will move um, the update to the operations of a stormwater utility and stormwater utility credit rules. Um, any further discussion? See none, I'll have the clerk call the roll to confirm approval. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Paul Masano. Aye. Bender. Aye. Chair Reich. Aye. There are six ayes. That is approved and will be forwarded to full council. Um, again, thank you for the presentation and all the work that went behind it. Um, if we have concluded the business, which we have, and if there's no objection from committee members, uh, I will declare this meeting adjourned and thank everyone uh, who participated. <laughs>